So those are the same diameter. Run it back and forth. So you can see we're transitioning from that hard, crisp corner to that nice radius edge. Always want to seal the CUSA before you blast. We've got the 1708 biaxial that we're using. Now that we've got resin underneath this, we're just gonna check it out, y'all. That is the ring that we did last night. Glassed it with two coats of uh, chop strand mat. Got that curing right now. So what we did last night, after we screwed it down, we resin coated it, screwed it, filled the screw holes this morning, sanded them off, and then we're transitioning now into continuing these uh, oh, combing supports. And it may be interesting to some of y'all, that's how we uh, install this. It's two strips of three quarter ripped and um, we've kind of keyed or indexed these a little bit so one sits into the other. We've got a batch of resin, got our three inch bristle brush and here's our pieces. We've got all of our, our uh, fasteners already staged and ready to go. And what I'm gonna do, Mark, I might get you to come over here and hold the outside of this piece if you don't mind. That way I can brush some resin on it. See how nice, y'all notice too, sometimes you can do a combination of brushing and what I call dabbing. Y'all hear me talking about that all the time where sometimes you take the brush and kind of work it that way. All right, brother, what do you think? Does that look good? Everybody happy with that? Right. We don't have to run these in there. Crazy, crazy hard. Just snug, the resin's gonna hold. Here we go. There's all those together. Woo -hoo. All right, that's looking pretty good. Mark's cleaning up. Really good to me. That voice y'all hear is mom, we're videoing. Hello, mom. Are you <laughs> Maybe so. Y'all, one of the reasons we're hurrying, it's about lunchtime. We're trying to zip, zip right along. That's my mom, that's Miss Joy. Maybe we get a lunch invite, y'all. So we're gonna be jumping over to the other side, probably taking a little lunch break, pick up on the afternoon. We got one, two, three already drilled. And uh, we got our inlet set up here. And these are the inserts. Those are the, uh, we had to special order those. Those are the large, diameter ones and uh got my brother mark here helping us again we got our big hole saw and we're running a that's a what is that an inch and five sixteenths mm -hmm. mark an inch and five yep. sixteenths and what we want is this thing to slide in there and flush up just like that find our mark there real important y'all when we're starting to get this square with the transom and the angle there should be hitting on the yeah, dude. You happy with that? Yes, yeah, it's hitting. All right, y'all. That's as far that hole saw will go. Transom is thicker than the depth of that thing. So what we're gonna do? We drill halfway through one side. We got a real long quarter-inch drill bit, which is the same as the the pilot bit, so those are the same diameter. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna chase it. We're gonna chase it through there. We'll line this one up. A little nerve wracking to drill big old holes. There's our pilot hole. And what we're gonna do is just center up. Mark's gonna catch that dust for us. on that one all right y'all so there's a couple things you can use we got a big rat tail file or a rasp sometimes you need to come in here and run that through the hole a few times to give it a little more room clean it up a little bit or y'all can see mark just made a piece of pvc here with a uh, piece of sandpaper wrapped around it and you can insert it through there 
run it back and forth. Clean up any little birds or problems that you got. But what we're in the process of doing is using this little Bosch palm router. That's the little Colt that I like so much. Got a nice little radius router bit on there and we've already done a portion of this. So this morning we've filled all the holes, kind of uh, contoured and cleaned everything. And uh, we had a nice crisp corner on it. And then you can see here where we've transitioned. <laughs> Can really see that transition zoom in there logan that's what you want we're going to be wrapping that in glass so we have been fairing and shaping got this nice pretty radius we got our combings all putty down and the screws countersunk and what we are doing now is sealing the kusa you always want to seal the kusa before you glass logan will zoom in here we can see resin coated we can see unresin coated is flat and we're just working our way right down sometimes a brush is the way to go you can use a roller certainly but sometimes a roller takes more time to set up they will leave little hairs in the resin that transition this first class we've got everything kind of taped and masked we've got our resin mat pan staged and ready y'all hear me say it all the time but good glass work really comes down to good prep work you want to be sure everything's clean dry got the right temperatures and humidity usually that 50 to 70 degree 75 degree is awesome glass work fairly low humidity if possible want everything to be dust free clean and dry oh but as a happy happy day looks so nice got the 1708 biaxial that we're using we're gonna do i think just two layers to start with probably a biaxial 1708 and then a mat we may follow it with a little bit more mat but this kusa is so tough we screwed this so thoroughly and bonded it and glued it don't really need to put a ton of glass it's a good time for me to tell y'all thank y'all so much for watching the channel the support means an awful lot to me you guys we want to do more of this you know i've said it before i hate to ask all the time but if you got friends or family uh, if you haven't already subscribed totally free to do so it helps the channel uh, the views and the watch time are a tremendous help and you guys i will personally respond to any comment you guys have you have boat questions curious about something um let me know you can comment down below in the video you guys hang tight We've got more cool stuff coming y'all's way we got glass going on these gunnels obviously we got a 1708 biaxial and what we've done is we've just placed it, placed it up there and made sure it fit the way we want. And we flip it half over itself. See that? One half is flipped over the other. We've already flipped one side up, rolled resin underneath it, kind of stuck it. And then that's what I'm doing here. Mark is working behind me there with a the little hard roller. We've already got the bow section. Now that we've got resin underneath this, we're just going to place in that right up to the corner. kind of work out the wrinkles as you go. I do like to wear gloves all the time because it kind of allows you to work with this stuff without just getting loaded up. My brother Mark did a good job. Mark's the glass man. Cutting and fitting this thing. Look at that. Ha ha. Ha ha, hee hee. Woo. Now sometimes if you're in a big hurry, you've got a big black panel, you can actually just pour some resin out. Ooh. That happens sometimes too. Be sure to get your brush 
out of harm's way. And what we can do now is just move this around rapidly. Just kind of get some everywhere and then come back and detail it is the way to go. It's got binders in the glass and once that resin gets on there, it kind of helps melt those binders a little bit. Helps everything kind of conform and become one. Okay, Mark's rolling. Y'all can see the difference. Logan, look how transparent that is versus here. You can see this is more opaque. That's going much darker. Mark, can you show them that little hard roller? These kinda, are little nylon. We'll put, dirty. we'll put some kind of a link. We call these like a little bubble buster. That's a three inch. I believe Mark's got a six inch. We'll put those in a link in the description below. But if you're doing glass work, that's just a standard uh, like a fiberglass roller a small one but that is going to be real important if you want to do quality glass work we're getting ready to roll this other piece of biaxial you can see we stopped here you can see there's kind of a heavy seam stop there for lunch time and we've got some pieces pre-cut and today we are just budding these pieces right up one to the other we're not really doing an overlap not really necessary in this application you can see my brother mark has rolled this up had it ready for us he's over on the other side wasn't out another piece but we got some we got some weather coming so we're trying to move this along just move it move it or lose it huh i know i'm moving fast y'all but we're this is boat building for real where time is money we are not trying to drag this out we want to do it right but do it fast do it good we've been doing this a long long time get me and mark together dang it how many years when did you start fiberglass and mark how old were you when you started fiberglass and man 13 i think 13 and you're 63 yeah, 50, 50, 50 years yeah. 50 years and i'm almost i'm almost 50 myself i'll say another 30 let's just say another 30 years for me at least of course y'all our dad was a boat builder you know we grew up in a boat shop so logan makes our cameraman logan my son makes three generations here so we've had a little practice haven't we mark oh yeah a all right, see how quickly, quickly. Now you always want to be sure between batches. You do not want to leave any residue, any resin in there because it'll come back to haunt you. Won't it, Mark? Yeah, it'll have some jello. It'll gel up, make a little jello in your pan. And then also, what I like to do is between batches, and we had previously glassed this this morning, is roll out your roller and your brush, get any of that material that you can out of there we got our big five i'm going to mix up another nice size batch and then uh we're using these little meter it measures out in cc's there and i know approximately how much we've been using every day is a little different generally between one and two percent is where you want to go you want to thoroughly mix. I always like using the dyed catalyst. We add some red dye in there and it changes the colors of the resin so you can see what you're doing. Did you like it like that other Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. See what we're doing here? We're letting this mat kind of just feather right over that biaxial. Yeah, we're going to trim this. And what we're going to do everybody i'm going to trim this short because we're going to have to stop today and i want to leave the biaxial edge exposed i want to trim the mat back and sometimes that's just as easy as tearing some there we 
we go. You can see Mark has already gone down and I like to pat, pat it. Sometimes Matt will, if you drag your hand across it, it'll booger, it'll booger and burr. Booger and burr, that's a technical cover. <laughs> and here's the red dye that we were talking about. That's from the company uh, Norox. That's the chemical folks that make the um, catalyst, the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide or the MEKP. But you just add that. It only takes a few drops in a pretty big container and it'll turn it red and that way we can see what we're doing. I may put that in a link in the description below as well as some of the other stuff. All right, y'all, we're gonna wet out some of this mat. Again, using a pan and just a standard roller. And I like to use it systematically start at the top, work my way down over the corners. Like my dad used to say, whatever is white, you wet it first. Just get some resin on everything and come back and work it. See how that transitions? Real nice. You can see the biaxial ends and the mat transitions into it. It leaves a nice feathered edge. That way when we pick it up next week, it'll blend seamlessly. You won't have that big lumps and bumps. Got my number one cameraman, Logan, behind the GoPro today. Sure do appreciate Y'all comment below. I think his camera work is better than mine. I move around too much. Logan is smooth like butter. All right. Y'all can see there's little spots. See like right in there. I'm gonna hit that and it'll just go away. But we're using a little bit of acetone and a one gallon mixing bucket. And then periodically with these hard rollers, you need to freshen them up a little bit or else they get sticky. And so that's what we're doing. Matter of fact, Mark is rolling over there and to speed things along, I'm gonna go ahead and start working out some of these bubbles for this mat. You guys can see the little grooves forming behind the roller. The main thing with these bubble busters is to keep moving and not to put too much pressure in any one spot. Yeah. This takes your glass work to the next level. See how I'm starting at one end and working down the other? I'm not jumping all over the place. It's like a search pattern or a grid. Sometimes you want one of the wider ones, like I'm using now for covering big, big territory. Mark's got the smaller. Sometimes it's like a wide putty blade or a narrow putty blade. There are times when one or the other is preferred. back up here into the corner y'all see we're just moving rapidly you don't want to jab into corners some people i see they'll take the roller and they'll just keep pushing into the corner that will bruise the glass and leave a divot just nice firm steady pressure and you're working speed and efficiency Woo! that looks nice y'all all right, we're gonna jump over and do the other side, but that's good for now. I want y'all to know how much we appreciate your support of the channel. We're uh, gonna, we've got a lot more cool stuff coming up. We're gonna be fair and finishing hardware, just a lot to do. We're still balancing our fishing season with getting this boat built. So uh, thank y'all again so much for support of the channel. Remember to hit that thumbs up, the comments, the likes, the subscribes to the channel really help a ton. And as always, it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters down in Gulf Shores, Alabama and Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. And we'll catch you guys next time out.